Phil Arcuzzi has influenced me as an artist enormously because when I became fully aware of who he is and came into knowledge about his discography, you know, you can't help but to think to yourself, this is James Brown with a political agenda. Uh, we can go on and on about how rough things have been in the United States for people of color and what the slavery and chattel system has done to even present some of the circumstances we're dealing with today here in America. But we're talking about a dude from Lagos, fam. You know, that's the home of black on black crime. It was chiefs and people selling each other as chattel before the white man showed up with gunpowder and rum. So you're talking about black on black crime, like a fucking tough place to be saying the type of things that he was saying to the system on such a consistent basis and to have the entirety of West Africa damn near behind him because the, the things that he's speaking about in water, no get enemy, expensive shit, coffin for head of state when his moms was killed and they actually walked his mom's coffin to the head of state's office and was like, yeah, money, <laughs> you know? You did this, and the reason you did it is this, 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 and that. And all these motherfuckers behind me know it, and you know that shit's whack. So what the fuck, you know? That's fucking huge balls, man. So as an artist, I really have come to admire Fela Kuti's personal fortitude, let alone his musical prowess and his, his abilities as a composer and his taking all this West African syncopation and his London music education and his American experience meeting people in the Black Power Movement and coming back to Lagos like, y'all figured it out. I know what the fuck I want to say. And I'm going to say it loud as hell. And I'm going to have 19 motherfuckers in my band <laughs> and 12 dancers. And I'm going to have 27 wives. And this is who I am, and this is how it is. And call me crazy, but I am not a liar. You know, I think there's a lot to be said for that. So for me, you know, post Malcolm X and Martin Luther King, I haven't had anyone to look at with that kind of balls. You know, if Martin Luther King was alive, I might be a preacher. If Malcolm X was alive, I might have went Muslim, for all I know. I don't know, you know, but what I do believe in is having an open mind and understanding the environment that you're in. And even though you want to have fun and live a good life, you got to stay focused on the things that are trying to hold you back. You know, friends close, enemies closer to, to, the, to the extreme. And Fela gave me that. I, I won't go so far as to say that there are no American leaders to look up to or I don't admire any black men or women of power. I mean, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them that have gone through all facets of the American political, educational, financial, social systems and done amazing things for us, for people in general. But, you know, the real mouthpieces for us, they usually get knocked off pretty young. You know, that's a deterrent of unfathomable proportion. Otherwise, there would be hundreds of men and women falling in line behind them to take those positions. They don't exist. Well, show them to me. I eat my glasses. Show me that guy. Who's who's driving who's driving pro-black culture from that type of driver's seat today? It's not to say that people don't exist who are doing a fantastic job at what they do, but they are not. Martin Luther King. They are not Malcolm X. They are not John Henry Clark. They are not some of the other prominent leaders that we came to learn a lot of our doctrines from who were knocked off well before they even reached their prime.